Let's explore cryptography in the editor. In this program, we'll be writing a Caesar cipher encryption. So let's take a look at what we have so far. So what we're doing is we're asking the user for a message here, and we're taking that message and converting it to uppercase. We don't want to have to deal with lowercase letters for our encryption, so we're just going to take the message that they send and convert it into uppercase. Once we do that, we then run our encryption method and print out a result. So our encryption method, notice it takes the original message as well as the secret key, and it passes it up here. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually take that and uh, convert it by shifting everything over that amount. So we're going to write this function now. So let's think about creating a roadmap here. So first thing we need to do is loop over. So we're going to loop over our original message. Okay. And then what we're going to say is we're going to say inside of our loop, we're going to look at each letter and we're going to say if it's, if alphabetic, then what we want to do is convert it over to our new message. And we're going to say if it's not alphabetic, we're just going to return our original key. Okay. So if it is alphabetic, how are we going to convert this? Well, we're going to do a couple steps. First thing we're going to do is we are going to um, calculate the index that we're at. Okay, and then we are going to shift it So if it is alphabetic, what we need to do inside of this conditional is essentially shift the letter by the key. Then we're going to get the new letter. And finally, add to the existing results. Okay, so let's look at how we're going to do this. So looping over the message, we can just do um, a for each loop here. So we're going to say for original character in our message. Okay. And then we need to check to see if it's alphabetic. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to look to see if that original character is in this string here. And if it is, we know that it's alphabetic. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to get the alphabetic index. We're going to set that equal to our alphabet. And we're going to use the find here and pass it our original character. Now we could use index here instead of find, but what find does is it converts it and if it's not in there it returns a negative one. If we use index and it's not there it actually throws an error. So we want to use find there. So now remember this is going to return negative one if it's not there. And so we can use that right here for this if alphabetic. Okay, so let's move this up here actually. So we're going to say if oops. If alphabetic index is greater than or equal to zero, then we know that we are in someplace in this mess, this string here, and so we know that we have an alphabetic character. Okay, so what we want to do is compute the new index. So we're going to shift the letter by that index. So our new index is going to equal our alphabetic index plus our key. Okay, so for example, if we had A and our index was 8, we would shift it 8 spaces. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. But if we have a Z and we want to shift it 8 spaces, we're going to shift it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, we get to this H here. The problem is that if we take our Z, which would be index 25, and add 8 to it, we get 33. Well, 33 is not in this string. And so what we can do is we can use our mod function. So we're going to say our new index is going to equal our existing index, new index, 
And then we're going to take mod of the length of this here. So we're going to say length of our alphabet. And what that will do is it will take and return the remainder. So again, if, if I had Z and it was 25, and I add 8 to it, I get 33. If I take a mod of this length, which is 26, it's 33 mod, mod 26 gives me 7. And so I'm going to take the 7th character, which is then my H. Okay, so that will give me the right spot if I'm going past what I had. Okay, so now I want to get that new letter. So my new character is simply going to be my alphabet. sliced at that new index. Okay, and then I can finally add that to my existing string. So I'm going to say encrypted plus equal is my new character. Okay. And again, I said if I don't have that, so my else here is if it's not in that index, then what I want to do is just return the original character. So I'm going to add my, my original character back to my result. So I'm going to say encrypted results is equal to my original or plus equals. Okay, and that should work and give me my encryption. So let's take it out, check it out. So if I say hello, oh, looks like I have a small typo here. And there we go. Let me try something with a Z in it. And so again, it rolls over, converts it to double H's. Okay, now if I want to write a quick decrypt message, I can do that um, essentially by using the negative key. So I'm going to take the same idea here and I'm going to make a decrypt. Okay, And the way I'm going to do my decrypt is I'm going to essentially call my encryption with a negative key. So I'm going to return my Caesar encryption, but I'm going to take the key as negative one times my key. Okay, and let's try printing that out. So I'm going to just print decrypted. and then print my Caesar decrypt. And I'm going to pass it my encrypted along with my secret key. So let's try that out. And there we go. So let's take a look at how easy it is to crack the Caesar cipher. So let's say you are working on decrypting something and you intercepted an encrypted message and you also knew the original message, but what you wanted to do is find out that key so that you could decrypt future messages. Well, it's pretty easy to do with a computer, and so let's take a look at a message here that is going to crack that Caesar cipher. Essentially, what we're going to do is take our encrypted message and decrypt it one character at a time or one key at a time until we find out how we match our original message. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So essentially we're going to do a loop. So for i in range and we are going to go through the length of our alphabet right here. Okay, and again we're going to shift it one character at a time until we actually match our original message. So we're going to take our um, encrypted or decrypted message. We'll call it attempt because we don't know if it's going to be right. And we're going to use our Caesar decrypt. And we're going to pass it our, our, rich, our decrypted message, our encrypted message. 
and whatever the key is for this pass, which is going to be our value of i. Okay, now we can check to see if we match. So we're going to say if this decrypted message attempt is equal to our original message, then we've essentially cracked our cipher. So what we're going to do is we're going to print cipher was cracked in only and we can print our decrypted message. Okay. Now what we want to do is return our key. So return i. And if we get through our whole loop and we haven't found it, we'll return negative 1 for some reason. We should find it someplace in there as long as it works. So let's give this a try. So let's say we're going to shift it 5. So it took five tries and it cracked it and here's our cracked. Let's try it again if we wanted to say hello and we're going to shift it you know, 28 tries. Well, again, it was cracked in two tries. The key is two. Remember, there's only 26 letters and once we go past 26, we essentially loop around and um, are able to you know, shift it by a number you know, less than 26. So 28 becomes a two. So if we shifted it for 26, for example, A would just shift 26 characters over and become A again. So that's how we crack our cipher, our Caesar cipher using a computer.